The second winning series is a unique sports program that probes into the often controversial world of professional and amateur sports. Sports View Today. Everybody, welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron, and I'm Bob Page. Our sponsors in the program today: Uncle Al, Al Dietrich Oldsmobile. Well worth the drive to the Pontiac Waterford area for all your Oldsmobile needs. Service where Telegraph ends, the deals begin. Conyers Ford in Detroit to stay at 16th Street and West Grand Boulevard. We have Mount Clemens Dodge, 19 mile and grass. Take the 19 Hall Road miles. exit off I-94. Right? I, that, I'll let you plug that one. Those are your boys out there, Chuck Cross and the gang. And we have Paul and Roxanne Andoni and the folks at. Andoni's Restaurants with two locations to serve you on Telegraph Road in Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. Yes, our guest in the program, too. Our guest in the program today, one of the few members of the Lion defense who played well in Chicago on Sunday, cornerback Bobby Watkins. And uh, we'll be talking about the Bears and uh, how awesome they are. And believe me, they are plenty awesome. And also about the Lions' chances the rest of the way. As Daryl said after that ball game, you know, hey, we're, we're still 5-5. Five and five. Right in it, we beat Minnesota this coming Sunday. You know, they got a he chance to get He didn't sound too uh, convincing when he was 72nd, well, though. Uh, based upon the way the offensive line, the defensive line play uh, yeah. against the Bears. But uh, I think they should beat the Vikings on Sunday. And uh, as I said, they would in training camp. The Lions will go 8-8 eight and eight this year. And Darrell Rodgers is going to get a lot of consideration for NFL Coach of the Year on that basis alone. Well, I think the best coaching job in the NFL has been done by John Robinson with the... Uh with Los Angeles, Maybe. I think. First of all, he almost won a game without his first string quarterback, and uh, the, uh, Dieter Brock has been a, a disappointment. But he—they're playing so well. They're eight and one with him. Well, he's, be a disappointment. He's, he's been a disappointment. He—he's not a mobile quarterback. Well, he's 34 years old, and he's almost your age. Uh, I know I'm going to be turning 34 in another week or two, and I'm not Bob, as mobile as I, I used saw, to be. No, I guess not. <laughs> when I saw you umpiring back in the 60s, you were 34. <laughs> So anyway, I don't think that the Los Angeles Rams are that talented of a team, really. Mm -hmm. And I think that he's done the best job in the league. Daryl Rodgers has to get some consideration. Yeah, but you know, but the thing that's interesting, Ronnie, is that if you look over the last couple of years, there's no question who the NFL's top coach is, Mike Ditka, the job he's done in Chicago. Oh, yes, but it is the Coach job. of the Year award and well, this season. Well, you look season. at the job Buddy Ryan's done over there putting together defensive that defensive coordinator. I mean, uh -huh. he's just been unbelievable. So I, I'd have to say that Mike, although Mike Ditka makes the decisions, he's done an excellent job. I think he's surrounding himself with good assistant coaches and that's very important. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, one of the big moments uh, in sports this year, and you've done nothing but talk about it ever since we got into the studio this morning, Monday morning as we tape, the appearance of your latest hero in Detroit for the first time, seven foot seven inch Manute Ball, B-O-L, for those of you who don't follow professional basketball. And, uh, you and have for you, the guys that still follow and, and, professional and, and, basketball, and, and, he's not a household but, name, yeah, although but, he's becoming one. But you've been, you've been bugging me all morning. we got to talk about Ball. we got to talk about, go ahead, there's the camera, what do you want to say? Bob, we should have talked about Ball on Monday. Monday because we he was were here busy. Tuesday. We had many subjects we to discuss, busy. and he was not at the top of my list. So there's <laughs> the camera. Take a minute and tell the people what you want to say about this guy. Well, I'll tell you this: he needs to put on weight. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Ronnie, that you'd like to add? Well, he bench presses 110. <laughs> yeah, that's more than you can do. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, Munich Ball's a project, but I think he's going to be a player in, in about five years in the NBA, a good player, if he can put on weight. Now, there's some question about whether he can put on weight. The first time I ever saw him, I was in Cleveland, Ohio, on one of the most god-awful January nights ever, two or three years ago. I was there, too. Doing, I, I, no, doing a University of Detroit game on the radio at this old dump they play at in downtown Cleveland. It was a horrible game, you know, two awful teams were falling asleep, and my broadcast partner, Chris McClure, suddenly says, look up there on the upper deck. That's the biggest human being I've ever seen. And I looked, and in the upper deck across the way is this guy draped literally about two or three, across two or three rows of seats. I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, even in a circus freak show. And afterwards, they told me that this was this kid from, I believe it's the Senegal, isn't it? Manute yeah. Ball. And, uh, uh, and being up from poverty in Africa, you know, he's got horrible teeth. His teeth are all rotted away, spindly. And the kids from Cleveland State, he was going to go to Cleveland State and wound up going to a small school in Connecticut instead, but he was working.
working out with Cleveland State, they said he could be a player. He had some ability. He could dunk a basketball flat-footed, not even going up well, on tippy-toes. That doesn't take ability. Like this that's not ability, Bob, at all. That's because you're 7'7". <laughs> seven seven. But he, I would have to say he gets it from his parents. Because his grandfather was 7'10". His grandfather was 7'10". What league did he play in? I don't know. <laughs> his mother was 6'10". Is that right? I mean, his grandfather just thought, too bad I got a short, short daughter. Because yeah. he's only 6'10". Yeah. Can you believe that I size? guess this is the rage now that Akeem Olajuwon has made it big. The NBA scouts are going over there and just scouring the African continent looking so. for some of these guys. I guess so, yeah. but they're projects. Yes, and speaking of projects, uh, by the time most of you people see this program, we may have one in our hands. His name is Jim Peterson. He played college basketball at the University of Minnesota. He is 6 feet 10, 6 feet 11, and this is the guy the Pistons are purportedly going to get for Terry Tyler, at least allowing the Rockets to sign Tyler and then trading, matching it, trading him down there, plus the number one draft choice. And again, the deal probably has been consummated by the time you see this program. Maybe, but I'll tell you this about Peterson. He's coming on as a player. He, he has been a disappointment. There's no doubt about that. But he's played a couple of good games in a row. The other night I noticed the box score who's 7-for-7 seven seven from the field. He's an inside player. I saw him play in college. Well, that's um, what they need, some inside the yeah. inside strength. He'll and bang a little bit for you. Well, they, they could use a little banging, although they got another guy that really doesn't do much else but bang in Mahorn, although Mahorn can rebound. I'm tempted to say that the Pistons uh, are making a mistake here because I like Terry Tyler so much, both personally and professionally. I have great respect for Terry's ability as a player. But on the other hand, you look at the start the Pistons have gotten off to, and how can you say that they really miss him? I think they missed him, though. I think that if they'd have had Terry Tyler, they'd, uh, they might have won another game. Against whom? Uh, which game at comes Chicago? to mind? That, uh, the one at Chicago. They had some problems with small forward come up. Tony Campbell, again, a project. He's up and down. He's up and down. He really he's got a, he can't shoot on the run. And, he's a, and his defensive play is not the smartest I've ever seen in a player. But he, he, he can run the court. And he can shoot the ball a little bit. He doesn't look good shooting it, but he can shoot it. And it's just a shame that they couldn't have gotten together on this deal because what we're talking about basically is a difference of some hundred thousand dollars a year over the next three years. I mean, Bill Davidson is an extremely wealthy you man. You don't look at it that way, Bob. Okay, That's then what the do you, how do you look at you it? Look we're at talking it. peanuts I, I, here. Well, you're talking peanuts. They're offering peanuts. We're talking peanuts in terms of a difference well, between I, what I, Terry wants and what they're offering. I think that the, the, the problem in sports is because these owners will give in those peanuts and it just drives the salary structure right out of the line. And I think what they've offered is too much. The well, Pistons. As I've said before, this, the salary cap situation in the NBA. Well, there's no the salary current, cap, Bob. Well the, well, the current financial climate is such that Vinnie Johnson was able to get a $500,000 a year offer from the Knicks, which the Pistons had to match to keep him. Right. Now, I love Vinnie Johnson. He's an outstanding player. He helps the Pistons. But Terry Tyler performs the same role as Vinnie comes off the bench and is just as important to the Pistons as Vinnie Johnson. Furthermore, he's been here longer, and he looks at the situation and says, well, if VJ's making five hundred grand a year, I ought to, too. I don't blame Terry except for that. that. Except that you're looking guaranteed over a few years and Terry's been around so long you wonder how many more years he's going to oh, let Vinny. Oh, come Terry's really? not even 30. Yeah, but the thing is he's, he's played a lot of minutes in the NBA. He's, he's been a sub in the NBA his career. What are you talking you, about? You stop and listen till I finish, <laughs> Bob. He is he has still played a lot in the NBA. The Iron Man consecutive game yeah. situation. He plays hard when he's on the court, yes, which he is does. very few do that. Yeah. So I, I think that uh, Terry's got a year, maybe two left, and I I think Vinny Johnson... A year or two? That's right. Check the average of, of, of the time spent in the Terry Tyler's got at least five years left but go oh, ahead. You're right. Bob. He's got at least five. How many left. guys are, uh, what's he about 28, 29 right now? 28. Bob, he doesn't shoot the ball that well. He's not that good of a player. He's got a good attitude. He's a good man for a ball club. He doesn't shoot well. He doesn't He doesn't rebound real well. Uh, you don't think this is going to hurt the Pistons? No, I don't think that it'll hurt the Pistons, although I think they've missed Terry Tyler this season. I don't think it'll hurt The key to the deal depends upon where that number one draft choice we is and, and whom the Pistons will, will, will use. Sure, the key we'll to that deal. But Peterson, again, is a project. He's much younger than Tyler. I think it's more than fair compensation. And it's just too bad, as I say, they couldn't have gotten together. It really for is. For that price, I don't blame the Pistons in any way, shape, or form. I think the Pistons are offering too much as it is. Football, our topic. You always have to have the last word. I'll let you have the last word. Fine. Go ahead. You're so, what are you, then shut up. <laughs> and let's, if I've got the last word, folks, we're going to talk football with Bobby Watkins Thank and the Lions. You. And right after this. <laughs> Al Dietrich Old's 1985 closeout sale is nearing an end, but some large models remain. These beautiful Toronados and Delta 88s, for instance, and now incredible 8.8% GMAC financing on Toros. In the market for an 86? Well, if you thought savings on the 85s was something, you won't beat Uncle Al's prices, selection, or service anywhere.
This is Uncle Al. Come on out to 1177 Oakland in Pontiac, where Telegraph ends, the deals begin. America's search for peace must take us to tables like this. And tables like this. That's why thousands of young Americans will soon be traveling to other nations as part of a presidential initiative for peace, International Youth Exchange. Their goal? To help bring the world together, one friendship at a time. For information on costs, programs, and financial aid, write this address. Hi, I'm Chris Nichols. And I'm Karen Nichols of Nichols Ski and Sports on Michigan Avenue in West Dearborn. For the last 17 years, you know that Nichols has had the finest in ski, tennis, and recently golf equipment at the lowest discount prices. And right now, we want to remind you that the, the ski season, season is coming, coming and we're discounting our top name brands. brands. Olin, Solomon, Lang, K2, and the latest ski fashions. You won't beat our prices, our selection, or our service anywhere. So come see us personally and take advantage of the great savings at Nichols Ski and Sport. Hello, I'm Paul Andoni, and in more than a decade in the restaurant business, I've learned there are three important factors, good food, good service, and cleanliness. Andoni's delivers those things with two locations on Telegraph to serve you, one near I-94 and one just south of Ford Road. Whether you're on the way to or from the airport or just looking for a great place to eat, Andoni's is open 24 hours every day except Christmas. Breakfast anytime, daily specials, and a large menu to choose from, all at reasonable prices. Andoni's aims to please. Our guest on Sports View is Bobby Watkins, fine cornerback of the Lions. And uh, the first question for you, Bobby, is uh, although you had to be happy individually with your performance uh, against the Bears, the team did come up short. And, uh, to say the least. To, to say the least. And uh, I think if, you'd have, if the Lions would have played the game they did against a couple of those other teams that they've beaten, the Super Bowl teams, they could have beaten the Bears because I get the feeling at the beginning that the Bears were really weren't in at the very beginning of the game. What was your feeling on that? Well, you know, uh, I can't really say they weren't in the, in the game. You know, they came out and they took it to us. You know, we, the external factors of the game, you know, the wind, the, the rain, the, the cold, you know, it played a big part. Yeah, it did because you, you play your games, of course, inside at the Silver Dome. Had you played the game in the Silver Dome, would you have beat them? Well, you know, I honestly think we, we can beat them in the Dome. Yeah. Like that, they've proven they can beat anybody in the Dome, and you know they play the Bears the final game of the regular season. And I was talking to some of the Chicago players after the game, and I said, you know, these guys are so tough at home. What if it comes down to a 16-0 and season, and you've got to beat the Lions in the Silver Dome to do it? I don't think they relish that thought. Well, uh, <laughs> yes, I was talking to you. You're the guest on the program today. I was suggesting that the Bears aren't going to be happy to play you in the Silver Dome, the final game of the season. You no, know, you know, I think they, they would probably be looking towards the playoff, and they probably yeah. would uh, sit down a couple of players on the, on the bench, you know, McMahon and some key players, and you know, we'd probably slip up on them. Bobby, without their number one quarterback, I mean, that's the time to get those guys. With, uh, I thought that, I mean, Steve Fuller is not exactly going to, go to the Pro Football Hall of Fame or any, <laughs> anywhere near it. <laughs> and you, you had your chance. When you knew that McMahon wasn't playing, what's the attitude of the team say, hey, we can beat these guys? Well, yes, but, you know, our, our, uh, our plan was to stop Peyton. You know, we felt that if we stop Peyton, then we can definitely uh, win the game. But as you know, we didn't, didn't stop, stop him. Peyton. Yeah, so sure. We didn't stop him or Sui, so it played a big Suey part. Sui ran his was tail off. I, I mean, he's seen not a Hall of Famer either. The tackling mm -hmm. statistics, but I would think that uh, you mm -hmm. and Bruce McNaughton and Demetrius Johnson and uh, William Graham probably had as many tackles as anybody because they were in the backfield, Peyton and Sui, all day long. Yes, I tell you, it's, it's taking its toll on our. Uh, our defense, you know, we're having to make a lot of tackles. And, you know, our defense, you know, it's the 3 4 defense is, is set up to where the linebackers would make most of the tackles. But, you know, we're hitting that linebacker right now. And, uh, you know, they, they're blowing through there. What's the problem with the defensive line? Is it just the adjustment to the three man line? Because you saw yourself the way they were blocked and the way the Bears yeah. ran through. There was like there were no down linemen in the game. Well, you know, it's three men against five, and it's, uh, it's tough on the defensive line, you know, especially, especially the new system, you know. Yeah, learning at the adjustment to yes, it. Yes. But, of course, just about everybody in the NFL now plays the three-man front, and you guys are, if, correct me if I'm wrong, dead last in rushing defense. Yes, you know, I, what can I say? <laughs> what you can say is 
the defensive secondary, I mean, it's it's been a surprise, a very pleasant surprise for the team this season. Two years ago, unbelievable year in the secondary. Last year wasn't. Last year was also an unbelievable year yeah, in the secondary. Yeah, the other it was spectrum. just the other, <laughs> the other way. But I attributed that because there, there wasn't much uh, pressure put on the quarterback. This year, when everybody on the talk about the Achilles heel on the Lions being the defensive secondary, you had something to prove, and you guys went out and did it, right? Right. You know, it's uh, it was said that we weren't very good yes. last year. You know, they forced us to play tight without any pressure on the quarterback, you know, so therefore we were, we were susceptible. You were getting burned. Yeah, to the bombs and, or whatever, you know. But this year they say, well, we're not, we're not getting much pressure on the quarterback, but we, we have a choice to play. We'll uh, lose for this year. Or tight, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny, though, when you talk about playing defensive football, if a guy like uh, William Gay or Doug English makes a mistake on a running play and they get through, well, there are linebackers and there are defensive backs. But if Bobby Watkins makes a mistake, it's six. Well, is that a lot of pressure on you guys? Well, not, not really. You know, you, in the secondary, you you learn to play with that pressure. You know, it's a challenge, and you just learn to play with. It. Did you? Uh, you've you always been uh, defensive back. defensive back. Have you always uh, was that always your position coming up when you were a kid and everything? Well, I I played linebacker. Uh, I played offensive tackle. And, uh, offensive offensive tackle. tackle. Yes, in in, in uh, grade school. Uh huh. And. You were the same size, huh? Sure. No, no, I was I was much bigger than all, all the rest of the guys, and then we got into high school and everybody shot up. You know? yeah. It's like, and the guys, you know, they got noticed with the guys making the touchdowns, and I said, well, I'd rather play a wide receiver or a defensive back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where well, you get noticed too. But these are the bad things. For instance, you can have a great game at defensive back. And if you blow one coverage, or maybe not even blow a coverage, if you're the guy covering when another guy catches a touchdown pass, even if you have him covered, that's what people remember. Yes, you know, you just have to live with that, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like that. Do you go home at night? You weren't burned at all uh, in Chicago on Sunday, but when you've been burned for a touchdown pass, do you go home at night and do you, you have difficulty getting to sleep because you keep seeing that play over and over again? Well, the best thing is to, is to learn from that, you know, that experience and, you know, then, then forget about it. You know, learn what you did wrong, do what, what, did you, what you did to, to get beat. Mm -hmm. And then just forget about it. Make sure it doesn't happen again. I guess the little questions on a lot of people's minds is just how good the Lions are. What are the Lions? Are the, are the Lions what we see against the Indianapolis Colts? Or the, the Lions when, when you beat the two Super Bowl teams? Uh, it's been an up and down season. You'd have to admit that thus far. Yes, uh, we're hurting. You know, yes, offensively and, and defensively. You know, so <sighs> I really can't say. You know, it's we just have to go out and, and try to. One of the rest of these games. You've been surprised, though, haven't you? I mean, you have to be in shock if somebody would have told you at the start of the season that you're going to be Dallas, San Francisco, and Miami. You know, my thoughts on, on that was uh, I felt that if we could win the games that we're supposed to win and, and, and some of the games that we're not supposed to win, we could definitely be a contender and, you know, mm -hmm. contend for the Super Bowl. And this year, it's, it's, we've, we've lost a lot of the games that we, we, we should have won. And we've won a lot of the games that we should have lost. So you know, I don't know about that, Bobby. What what, yeah. what games have have you lost that you should have won? Maybe, yeah. maybe Indianapolis and what else? Well, you know, my feelings. I felt that we could definitely beat uh, Minnesota or Indianapolis. Or, yeah, Minnesota's tough on the road. Anyway, yeah. Minnesota's home yeah. tough on the road. Yeah. When well, the Lions were playing, yeah, the Lions have, yeah. have, have never had good success yeah, or any a, kind yeah. of success in Minnesota. You get a chance to get even this Sunday back in the Silver Note. Yeah. We'll talk with That's Bobby Watkins about that, and we'll have more with the Lions cornerback right after these messages. <laughs> You know, I cannot believe some of the things you've gotten me into over what the now? years. What are we doing out here at Mount Clemens Dodge in the middle of nowhere? Bob, they have over 400 new 1986 cars and That's trucks. That's why we're here. It's worth the drive. Where is it? It's on Gratiot and 19 Mile Road. Just take I-94 to the Hall Road exit. Come south on Gratiot one mile. That's where you'll find Mount Clemens well, Dodge. Right. And listen, the reason they should come here, they have the lowest prices in town on everything. Why can't I just take Gratiot and come right up? You can, but it's easier coming up the other way, like I told you. I-94 to Hall Road, get to Gratiot, come south one mile. So we want to see Chuck Cross and the gang out here for the absolute lowest prices in all the Dodge cars and trucks? That's it. The lowest prices. You'll take your reputation off. Over 400 cars. Much, I, I drive one, it's a beautiful car. That's not saying much either. Mount Clemens Dodge, ladies and gentlemen, despite the fact that Ron comes here, the best deals in Dodge cars anywhere in Metro Detroit, 19 mile in Gratiot, take I-94 to the Hall Road exit. Gratiot, 19 mile. 
Hi, I'm Nathan Conyers, president of Conyers Ford. I was born in this town and always thought of Detroit as a great city. That's why we live here and have kept our business here, and we don't intend to leave. Detroit's future depends on all of us who live or work in the city. That's why we urge you to patronize Detroit businesses. When you shop for a new car or anything else, do your shopping in your city. It's up to us. Think about it. We're back on Sports View with Lions cornerback Bobby Watkins, and let's talk about your career before you got to the Lions and uh, growing up. Were you, uh, did you play several sports? Well, in high school, I played uh, basketball. I ran track, played football, and you know, in, in college, I only played football. Why? You didn't want, didn't want to be a track performer. Well, you know, it's tough basketball and football too. Track. You know. It takes away from spring training. Then again, you know, I just, I didn't like track. You know, mm -hmm. it's too much uh, running. <laughs> what do you like about football so much? Football, you know, it's exciting. You know, you, it's physical, you know, and the, the, the fans and everything. It's just exciting. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about some of the guys you play against, wide receivers in the NFL. Who's overrated? Overrated? Yep. Who isn't nearly as good as they, they think he is? Well, I can't really say anyone's overrated, you know. Usually the guys that are, are, are rated pretty high are pretty good. Are you they? Know? Yes. Anybody underrated? Somebody you think, gee, this guy's a terrific wide receiver, gives me a lot of trouble and nobody really knows about him? No, not necessarily. Not really? No. Who gives you the most trouble? Well, uh, I tell you, the guy that gave me a lot of trouble was in, his name was Steve Largent. Sure. Well, He's given a lot of people yeah, trouble. You're, you're not the only one. Lester yeah. Hayes calls him the master of deception. I tell you, he's 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 great. You know, he's who's the fastest receiver? Fast. Willie Gault. Willie Gault. Well, James Lofton and Willie Gault. You know, they're pretty fast. James and then Phil Bips. You know. Why does Largent give you so much trouble? Because when you're talking about speed, I mean, this guy runs what about a four nine forty or something like that. He doesn't have a lot of speed, does he? He works well with the quarterback, and mm -hmm. and then he's very deceptive. You know. Deceptive speed or deceptive uh, moves or moves, what? moves and speed. You know, you mm -hmm. say, well, I can cover this guy all day, and you know. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's open. Yeah, yeah. he's open. You know. How much of your game is predicated upon intimidation, establishing yourself right at the outset if a guy catches a pass, hitting him hard, taking his head off? Well, uh, his head off you. Yeah. <laughs> in college, you know, I, I played an intimidating game, but right now in, in the pros, I, I I've gone to more finesse. You know, just laying back and covering a guy. Why, Why is that? Because you know. I, any given time, you can get beat. You know, if you don't, quarterback doesn't have a lot of, I mean, have a lot of pressure on him. Then mm -hmm. hey, he's got a lot of time to work. You talk about intimidation. Do you talk to the receivers at all? Well, not not necessarily. Don't so come you, over here, fella. Don't catch anything on me. Not, nothing here today. No, no, that's my, not my style. That's more uh, the doctor. Uh -huh. Should I say to me? They, they do. They, yeah. Oh, he yeah. talks that way, yes. huh? No kidding. Yes. Talks a good game. And these kids in Cleveland, mm -hmm. they call themselves the dogs of defense, the, the Browns. Did you know that? The Browns defensive backs? No. And they have a big poster of the four of them dressed up in evening wear tuxedos with these huge Doberman hounds in the poster. Mm -hmm. And the Browns cornerbacks actually bark like dogs when wide receivers are going out into the defense. You, you didn't hear about that? <laughs> Yeah, no, no. they're crazy. You need you need something like that. That we haven't had any colorful Lions cornerbacks since uh, Jimmy. Uh, what was uh, Jimmy Spider Man? Jimmy Allen was here a few years ago. Well, Train Lane was a little colorful. Yeah, well, that was before Jimmy Allen. Too. <laughs> Definitely before Jimmy Allen. Bobby, personally, you're from Dallas, grew up there, and you went to Southwest Texas State. Memory serves me correctly. You live in San Antonio in the off season. Yes. And you don't even speak Spanish. No, not yet. <laughs> Why San Antonio? Well, you know, my wife, she lives in San Antonio, and she's, you know, currently working down there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ah, we, I didn't, we decided on not coming up here, you know, her, so she, she decided to stay down there and it's work. It's like a commuter of marriage then almost. This, she's an investment yes. broker, I understand. Yes. Is that, that's tough. People don't realize that, I guess, about professional football, professional athletes. It's difficult, the lifestyle. Yes, it is tough, you know, seeing as that. We don't get to see, see each other that much, but, you know, when we do it. As so. you're talking about your career, what point did you feel that, hey, I'm going to play in the NFL? Well, uh, you know, actually, uh, I really didn't give it much thought, you know, because from my school, I believe it was only maybe three guys that ever got get drafted. And uh, they had a hard time, you know, maybe one or two years. And then all of a sudden, you know, <clears throat> we had a great season my senior year, and it was a poor season for defensive backs and, you know, in the draft. So, I so you, not until your senior year, you you gave any thought of playing in the NFL? Well, no, not not really. Yeah. What would you do That's if you weren't a football player? What would you do if you weren't a football player? Well, you know, you know, currently I've got my my degree in uh, in business finance. You know, so 
maybe a loan officer. Or investment counselor? Yeah. Darn investment <laughs> counselor. Maybe someday you'll be doing that in San Antonio, Texas, though, huh? You've got to learn yes. to speak Spanish if you do yeah, it out there. But, those, yeah. but, but first, a Super Bowl ring, when, by 1993? <laughs> Hopefully sooner than that. Yeah. <laughs> you think the Lions are close, then? Yes, you know, it's, as soon as we, you know, get, get the kinks out of our defense and and the offense gets going, I think we'll, we'll be on the ball. All right, we'll find out how you're going to do against Minnesota. So you people out there who uh, wager once in a while NFL games, get ready. We'll tell you Bobby Don't Watkins. Don't listen to Bob Page, though. Don't listen to me. Bobby Watkins is going to let you know the shape of the team right now as they head into the Vikings game after this final timeout. <laughs> This is what it's like to be functionally illiterate. In there are 27 million Americans like this who need G your help. I Volunteer at this number. The only degree I you need is a degree of I caring. Can. I think I can. Parker, just looking over your work. You know, I usually don't go with freelancers I don't know, and I never heard of you, but uh, I was in a bind, so I thought I'd give you a shot. <laughs> wow, these are really fantastic. How'd you like to sign up full time? You took a chance on me, I'll take one on you. Everybody deserves a chance to make it on their own, and there are things you can do to help. Right, National Urban League. Bad days. Everybody has them. Hello? No. Not even with both of us working. The baby is crying. I gotta go. Even the littlest thing can set you off. Stop. Take time out. Count to ten. Get hold of yourself before you take hold of your child. Write Prevent Child Abuse, Box 2866, Chicago. We're closing out Sports View. We have on a guy that's done a good job for the Lions this year, Bobby Watkins in the defensive secondary. And uh, you lost to Minnesota, but uh, I believe you're going to beat Minnesota in the Dome come up Sunday because Minnesota's lost again, and they're just still not that good. I think you're going to beat them Sunday. What's your feeling on that? I think so, too. You know, we're definitely, we're, we're playing in the Dome, home crowd. Uh, What's it going to take? What kind of game you look for? Well, we, the offense has got to score some points, uh, and the defense is, you know, stay consistent and... Just keep him out of the end zone. How do you feel about Tommy Kramer as a quarterback? And uh... well, he, he's he's a good, good quarterback. Bobby, I haven't really asked you about the Bears. Uh, you lost to them on Sunday. Are they as awesome as everybody thinks they are? Can anybody stop them? Well, uh, I tell you, the, the Bears have a great team. You know, Coach Ditka, he's uh, he's done a great job. You know, the defense is is, is awesome. Offensively, you know, they're pretty consistent. They're good too. So uh, I don't know if I think they may be the team. They you chose to win the Super Bowl yes. right now. Yes. Not the Lions this year, as I say, by 1993, <laughs> maybe. <huh? laughs> yeah, maybe. Bobby, we want to thank you for coming on. We've got some gift certificates for you, and these are some of the people who provide same to Sports View today in exchange for promotional consideration. And we want to thank our sponsors on this program: Al Dietrich Oldsmobile in the Pontiac Waterford area, where Telegraph ends. The deals begin. Conyers Ford in Detroit, 16th Street and West Grand Boulevard. We have Mount Clemens Dodge, Gratiot 19 Mile Road, or 19 Mile and Gratiot. No. What a Gratiot 19, 19 Mile 19 Road. Miles. And we have miles. Paul and Roxanne and Doni and the people at Andoni's Restaurants, two locations to serve you on Telegraph and Dearborn and Dearborn Heights. You can hear Ron Cameron on the radio, WCAR AM 1090, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 4 to 5 in the afternoon. My program, Bob Page's Detroit Sports Scene, airs over WJZZ FM 106, 7.30 and 8.30 in the morning, 5 and 6 in the afternoon. Ronnie, I know you definitely won't want to miss the next edition of Sports View today. I promised her that she gets a date with you for being on this program. Susie Chaffee. Susie Chapsticks herself, the ex-Olympic ski star. She'll be here. And Bobby Watkins. <laughs> All right, lots of luck to you this Sunday, the rest of the way. Good job this year. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Sports View today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.